welcome uh, to International University of Japan. As the president of this university, it is my great pleasure to open this international symposium. Today, I'm excited to hear more about the Sado Island gold mines from the distinguished experts and participants uh, in today's symposium. Sado no Kinzan wa Sengoku Jidai no Wari kara Edo Jidai ni kakete Nihon ga Sakok Sengsak o tootte ita Jidai ni Kai gai to no Kouryu ga Gok kagirae te ita naka de Nihon Dokuji no Nento teki na shikou gyo base ni Sekai ni Rui o minai Shistoryo no Kin o seisan shi Seiren kara Koban ma de Chuzou shita Keuna Sangyo i san desu now I like to introduce you the distinguished panelist. Uh, Professor Yasuyoshi Okada, Professor Emeritus of Kokushikan University. He is the president of International Council on Monument and Site. Ikomos, Japan. And participating online from Australia is Mr. Barry Gamble. Uh, he's a leading World Heritage Consultant. He's also giving us the, the advices on the, the Sado Island candidacy. And Professor Yohei Miyata, former Commissioner for Cultural Affairs, and also he was former president of Tokyo University of Art. And he's originally from Sado Island. <laughs> Moderating this important panel discussion is Professor Ayako Nakamura of IUJ. And I would like to pass the baton to Professor Nakamura. My name is Ayako Nakamura, and I'm an assistant professor in the School of International Relations. And from now on, I will take the moderating role for running this panel discussion. Let's start from the first agenda. Agenda one, the outstanding universal values, OUB, of the Sado Island gold mines. Bearing in mind the video you watched already and the presentation by the Professor Shinoda, we'd like to ask the viewpoints of the three distinct panelists based on their expertise. Professor Miyata, I'd like to ask a question. Based on your specialized knowledge in Japanese arts and craft and also Japanese culture, what are the world-class values of the Sado Island gold mines? Miyata, de gozaimasu. え、あるものがヨーロッパの中、あるいはいろんな世界の中でどうして知られるかということの一つに大きな論点があります。それは江戸期において国の財政が安定していた。安定するというためには、やはり財源が必要です。その財源は天領ということで、佐渡がそれを大い
陶芸などなどがございますそしてその陶芸を壊さないように船で万博に持っていくためにはどうするかというと今はプチプチがありますね梱包材がなかったんですよね何を使ったか分かりますかどうですか皆さん浮世絵なんですよ新聞紙と同じように包むようにして梱包して壊れないように持っていったのがねどこにでもあった浮世絵なんですそれをヨーロッパの人は見つけて中身の陶器もいいけど周りのこの浮世絵がすごいねということになるそこから北斎や歌丸やそういうものが出てきてすごいということそして日本って何黄金の国というふうなあ一つの,の知られ方がなるとそれからモネが印象派のモネの水田などでございますが例えば皆さん方のお国などのお庭はどんな造形でしょうか一つの代表例ですが、えー、ベルサイユ宮殿のお庭まっすぐです木も同じものがもらってるところが浮世絵日本というものを遠くに感じた彼は点在させて空間を作ってる手前にそれによってですね宇宙観を表すことができるそういう絵を描くことができたそれ,はそれもま,まさしくあの当時の安定した生活感つまり、えー、浮世絵から来ていたというふうなことがあるとそういう文化を育てられることができることができたのはもちろん江戸幕府の政治もあるでしょうが元を正すが全ては佐渡の金山の財源があったからこそであるというふうなことがあるわけですね、えー、そんなことをまた私としては最初に申し上げてえー、ただただ佐渡金山はこんなにいいということではなく見方を佐渡からではなくヨーロッパから見てその証明として芸術家がそれを証明しっかりと証明しているということもですね歌うことによって大きな生駒スに対する価値を作ることができるのではないかとそんなふうに思いましたけどいかがでしょうか。Let's move to the more international perspective. I'd like to ask a question to Mr. Gamble. Are you here? Yes, hello. hello. You are a specialist in mining and also as an expert at inscribing historical mining sites on the UNESCO World Heritage Site List. So, based on your specialty and expertise, I'd like to know in contrast to other international Or Japanese mines recognized as a historical sites. What are the distinctive values and the originalities of the Sado Island gold mines? Now, what makes your property outstanding? There is his historical significance, the, state of, the status of Sado Island gold mines in Japan at the time. And the status of Sado Island gold mines in the world at the time. So that's historical significance. And then, as the World Heritage Convention is a place based, a site based convention, you must have adequate evidence as testimony to that significance. And from what I've seen in Sado Island on several visits, And what I've seen comparing, when comparing with the world, Sado Island has both. But it is the heritage of the Edo period, the gold mining heritage, the socio technical systems of the Edo period, especially from, let's say, 1600 to 1650, that makes the heritage of Sado Island gold mines so exceptional. It's that heritage that makes the heritage of Sado Island gold mines in a global comparison outstanding. What makes, of course, Japan 
so different is under the shogunate, this was a period of isolation. We saw developments in the West proceeding, modernizing the introduction of explosives, the introduction of steam pumping, many other innovations. And this period of isolation in Japan, this period of seclusion, cut off many of these later inventions. But what Sado Island did, its communities through generations, its culture, its mining culture, it developed these socio-technical systems under the shogunate that perfected the use of traditional technology. It was organized by the shogunate on a large scale, a massive scale. So the output of Sado Island, the largest gold mine in the world, and probably at that time, um, the largest producer of gold, which was important nationally to the shogunate, and it was important globally in terms of the role it played with trade. So it's this, this uh, perpetuation of the use of traditional technology right through to the end of the Edo period that truly makes the heritage of Sado Island exceptional. Mr. Gamble, you mentioned about the evidence remained in the area. And do you think the quality of the evidence is good? It goes to the next agenda, but I think it relates to the next agenda. But from your perspective, the remain evidence is good enough? Yes. Um, and if I can just divide that evidence in, into three, principally, mm -hmm. uh, we have the evidence of uh, the, the mining, the primary mining of the large ore bodies, the hard rock which hosts the gold. And we see that in the open cuts that literally slice the mountains. We see that in the underground uh, mine workings, the drainage tunnels and, and so on. We see the working of the, the loosely consolidated alluvial gold mines, the plaza mining of Nishikawa, Nishimikawa, incredibly rare for that period. Both these evidences are incredibly rare for that period. And then we see associated with both, we see the, the evolution of integrated settlements that not only provide homes for the workers, but also integrate the manual process of ore processing at a very, very early period. Professor Okada, I'd like to question to you. So you are the president of Ecomos Japan and you're well informed about the inscription processes and procedure of the historical sites on the World Heritage Site List. So my question to you is, to what extent does the Sado Island gold mines match with the criteria to be a World Heritage Site? Meanwhile, uh, the operational guidelines for the World Heritage Convention describe or uh, uh, stipulate in the chapter of criteria for uh, the assessment of outstanding universal value that the uh, World Heritage Committee considers a uh, property to have outstanding universal value if uh, the nominated property meets one or more criteria. The uh, guidelines uh, mention 10 aspects for uh, criteria uh, that are introduced uh, by uh, Professor Shinoda. In the case of Sado, uh, as Professor Shinoda uh, referred, two of uh, criteria, uh, three and four, could be met. Uh, to speak further, criterion four is applicable uh, to an outstanding example of, of technological ensemble, which illustrates a significant stage in human history. Here in Sado, as you know, under the Tokugawa shogunate, a very uh, traditional but high level of gold production technology was continuously developed 
for a long time up to the mid 19th century, before the time of uh, modern mechanization. It was very unique and quite different way in uh, contemporary Western countries. And next, next one, criteria, uh, criterion three, uh, can be applied uh, to a unique or at least exceptional testimony to a cultural tradition or to a civilization. That is an efficient and large scale uh, production system, uh, which is adapted to the two uh, different mines, Aikawa uh, vein deposit, and uh, another one, Nishimikawa, uh, placer gold mine. Uh, do you understand placer gold mine? Uh, that is uh, in the form of fine sand mixed with, uh, uh, mixed with uh, surface soil. Uh, including uh, various cultures such as faith, performing arts, and public entertainment. Uh, uh, just interest before. Uh, uh, these are social traditions uh, nurtured by the communities, uh, by skilled engineers and uh, mining workers. The most important is the fact that various testimonies are very well preserved on site and at the same time abundant historic but movable materials support outstanding value of the property. Uh, and other than uh, criteria in terms of authenticity and integrity, the property uh, should meet the requirements as well. Oh. Agenda one goes to more details about the technologies used in the South Island gold mines. So I'd like to ask a question to Mr. Gambo. Again, from the viewpoint of the specialist in mining history, we'd like to ask more about excavation and the surveying technology used in the southern gold mine. So the, my question is, relative to other mines existing in the 17th and 18th century, how was the level of technology used in Sado? And could you add more detailed ex explanation about the level and the uniqueness of the technologies in Sado? Yes, of course. Uh, key production techniques illustrated as a system in Sado, and a system is important here. You've only got to look at the picture scrolls of Sado, the very famous picture scrolls that illustrate the mining system, and that shows the various techniques that were used in Sado and it also shows the stages of production from the mining itself through the ore processing and smelting and ultimately the minting of the Koban coins. So the techniques as a system show exceptional functional integrity as a whole. We see evidence of this in the landscape in various ways. The production techniques we've already heard are centered on traditional non-mechanized techniques. We've heard that the technology evolved in an island and a country that was secluded, that was under the isolation policy of the Tokugawa shogunate. But that does not mean that there were not some introductions. There were clearly some antiquated techniques, and we see those from, let's say, Nishimikawa, the Plaza Gold Mine, where essentially Roman techniques were used. The 
uh, the um, Roman techniques we see in properties in what was imperial, uh, I, the, the, the Spanish, Portuguese, Iberian Peninsula, Roman imperial mines, first, second century AD, uh, we see those uh, used almost in the same way in Nishimikawa to uh, wash the gold down out of the, the mountain slopes into the sluices and uh, the gold is then extracted from, from these sluices. That's a very antiquated technique. So we see perpetuated some very old technologies and we see some more modern technologies being integrated, but it's the application of these technologies and the refinement of them I would say particularly of the ore processing and the smelting, the refining, this purity of gold, this is a result of an anthropogenic process that's been refined through this cultural tradition of mining. So we see this mix of evidence, uh, we see parallel tunnels driven for ventilation, we read about these things in books, but rarely do we see them in mines. And nowhere do we see them in such a rich combination as Sado for the period. We see um, the absence as well. We must think about the absence of techniques in Sado. We don't see the use of gunpowder. Uh, this was introduced uh, in, in the 17th century in, in uh, Central Europe. Uh, it reached Western Europe by the end of the 17th century. Uh, we don't see this introduced in Sado, um, essentially until after the Meiji Restoration, post 1868. This is very, very unusual. So it's not just the presence of techniques, it's also the absence of techniques that makes Sado Island outstanding. This is a last question from Agenda One, and we should focus on the broader socioeconomic context of the Sado Island gold mines in order to understand the meaning of the mines in the early modern period of Japan. Why, as yeah. the video show, the Edo Shogun government put a particular importance on the Sado Island gold mines, and how did the Edo government control or support the gold production system in Sado? Now, oh, 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 I would like to stress the fact in history. The gold production in Sado uh, was the most important tool for supporting the finance uh, of the shogunate in two ways, I think. The first one, uh, uh, tool as a, a raw material of the real currency money. And the second the tool as a uh, the fund for the exclusive foreign trade uh, based on the uh, seclusion policy. Therefore, uh, Shogunate uh, directly controlled the Sado Island and managed to uh, persist the gold production over a long period of time. And people's welfare uh, was enhanced as a governing strategy as well. So, oh, I can be said, uh, it, it can be said, uh, uh, the shogunate was the uh, owner of the island and uh, uh, general manager of the gold production. Uh, this is uh, the answer uh, to the uh, second question. Yep. Let's go to the next agenda. Yes, it works. Next agenda, agenda two is about evidence-based approaches for disseminating the values of the Sado Island gold mines globally. So in the discussion of agenda one, we could confirm that outstanding universal value of the Sado Island gold mine. So the next issue is going to be how to appeal these values to the domestic and the international audiences. The question is, 
In order to appeal the OUVs of the Saddle Gold Mines for broader domestic and international audiences, what kind of evidence should be provided to them with? Mm. Yes, uh, we have uh, plenty of physical evidence, mm, maybe more than enough for us to understand the universal value at the site and also in the museum as well. For example, uh, I'm sure that uh, the most impressive one is uh, a huge trace of open cut mining. Hmm. We call Do you know Warito? Do you remember the, the, the many many students visit there? I think in the Aikawa uh, mining area. Uh, this is nothing but a visible testimony uh, to uh, continuous human desire to the goal. And, and the uh, next one, very personally, uh, I was surprised very much to meet the actual remains of Archimedes screw. When I visit the Sado Museum, they call or locally uh, call it Sui Shorin. May I have the picture? No? Uh, uh, This device. This, yeah, this device, Archimedes screw, uh, derived from uh, the ancient uh, Roman or even Greek uh, civilization. Uh, that is a, a very uh, uh, old and uh, worldwide technology. And also, uh, uh, we have very proud of inheriting huge amount of historic document. And, uh, some scroll explain the uh, minting process. Uh, just introduced uh, before uh, in, the, in, the, in the site of uh, uh, archival site that the uh, minting system is very well. In, 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 the, in the picture scroll. So Professor Mieta, you were the commissioner of, for that, sorry, commissioner for cultural affairs by last March, am I correct? So based on your professional experiences as a former commissioner of the agency, how do you think about effective methods for globally disseminating the OUVs of the Sado? アイランドゴールドマインズ。え、一つの次の例に、え、文学の教科の時の話をさせていただきます。ですね、実はですね、あの、私のあの、5年間いた経験の中で、え、非常にドラスティックな経験でした。え、前日まで、え、実は胸型
本物の絵を見るとですね本物を見るとですね実はこれが沖ノ島これが大島宗像古墳群とかこれ全部をやりたいと言うんだけれどもここだけだって言われたんですよでこの絵はですね非常に近くにあるように見えるでしょぴっちったりと<笑>ところがこれは実はこの辺なんですよ<笑>でそ,の写真その地図を、あのー、文化庁のお役人さんに渡されたんですよ。これを見せたら無理だなと。<笑>無理だなと。でもお役人さんはその通りだなと。で私はお役人もやりましたけれども芸術家ですのでちょっとこれは絵を描いてこれを見せてロビー活動をさせてもらいます。あのさっきのこの会議をやって途中で何回か休憩があるんですよね。先生もご存知だと思いますその休憩所からコーヒーを飲みに行く間からここの会場へ来るまでの間に委員の先生方に捕まえてですねそれでこれを見せるわけですこれみんな一体でなきゃダメなんだよたらえー、こうなったんですね<笑><笑>この笑顔いいでしょですからですねあの何を言いたいかというとですね、えー、先ほども金を取るために鉄がいるというようにそれからあ佐渡がなぜすごいかというとヨーロッパからそういうジャポニズムが出てきたりとかっていう,うに視点を変えるというふうなことによってですね、えー、多くのことを学ぶことができるし獲得することができるというふうなことをちょっと感じました。So, Mr. Gamble. Sorry to keep you waiting. The, as an international specialist and been working for the inscription of the several historical mining sites on the World Heritage Site list, for you, what are the effective methods for appealing the OUV of the Sado Gold mines for the international audiences, including well informed or ordinary citizens? Well, I think. A very good example, if I may start with this, is the tremendous piece of work produced by the nomination team in Niigata Prefecture. The nomination document itself had that very task to portray the outstanding universal value and the key mix of attributes. That could be seen in the various elements in the landscape. They had the task to convey that to an international audience very succinctly. The nomination dossier has to convey to those it's written in English in this case, and it has to convey to reviewers whose first language will not be English very often. It will ultimately reach a committee of 21 nations, many of whom their first language will not be English. So, how did it do that? It used a very clever mix of photographs, diagrams, charts, all kinds of visual communications within that、uh, nomination document to successfully. Convey the outstanding universal value. Interpretation overall is revealing the significance of the site, revealing the outstanding universal value in the case of a World Heritage Site. Now, interpretation can be virtual, it can be a website, is, is an easy one, or, or a book, a guidebook. That's, that's interpretation. But then you have interpretation on site, and ICOMOS and UNESCO will call that site based interpretation presentation. Presentation of your sites. Now, presentation of your site is a great way to convey the values of your site. We looked at the Dorino. No worito, open cut, the, the, the slice in the, the great slice in the mountain. We, we looked at that as such a dramatic visual representation of value, such 
a dramatic visual representation. Now, presentation on site. Now, it is unsafe, perhaps, for visitors to go into that open cut, but you have successfully provided key views, distant views to the cut in the mountain and close views right, right beneath the open cut where visitors can gaze into it. That is presentation of your site to convey values. And you're doing that without words, using the physical site and presenting it to your visitors in the best possible way. Other presentation on site, you may have interpretive boards that convey that information. You may have site-based apps on your smartphones using QR codes at particular points and so on. There are a range of different ways of communicating off-site and on-site those values. I was so impressed when I visited the Sado Magistrate's Office, the reconstruction, which is used for interpretive purpose purposes. But one of the most successful in conveying the values of that very important part of the production process, the ore processing, I already mentioned the, the uh, processing, the partition of uh, using salt, partition of gold and silver on that site is exceptional. There are ways that you have used that reconstruction, not just to show people uh, in the two dimensions how these things work, but you invite participation. You create an experience for the visitor and that experience, experiential interpretation, first person interpretation, that's memorable and effective in terms of communication. Then, Based on the discussion on agenda two, we should move on to the last agenda, involvement and the participation of local communities in spreading the values of the Sado Island gold mine. About this agenda, let's start from the Professor Okada, the question to the Professor Okada. The first question, what are the roles of local communities for the historical sites? which is aimed at being inscribed on the UNESCO World Heritage Sites list. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, generally speaking, the people of the region of uh, World Heritage Site usually have a decisive role of inheriting the value of the site. But how? First, I think, uh, by means of uh, uh, learning the value of the property itself. And uh, thirdly, understanding uh, it better than any other experts uh, even come from outside. And secondly, uh, by uh, guiding uh, uh, visitors to the uh, heritage site and by or by uh, contributing uh, to the local education at the various uh, social and school levels. Here, I hope you, a young generation, uh, to, pull, to propose any other fresh idea on the role of these uh, communities. Let's shift the focus to the local communities themselves. So the question is going to uh, Professor Miyata, because I heard that you were born and grew up in Sado. So as a local person, what is the Sado Island gold mines mean? What does it mean for them? What is the mind for them? Because 
戦争は文化なんです私は戦争を取りましたよって何度か能舞台に立つことができましたというようにその恩恵というのがですね隅々にまで行き渡っているということなんです経済といっても単なる経済ではなくていかにその天領で非常に潤っている佐渡がどのようにして自分たちが活用して豊かな環境に作るかっていうのはこれ大変難しいことですけれどもそれをもう勉強することができたというその両方があるということはそれ辺大きな問題ではないかなここで一曲歌いましょうか。<笑>あやめときましょう時間がないでしょう<笑>文化的なものの価値観というものをしっかりと当たり前のようにもこれが難しいんですよ当たり前だと思ってるんですよところが本当は全然当たり前じゃないんですよすごいんですよっていうことを実は佐渡の人たちみんなにねはもう一度最高の世界遺産ということで気づいてもう誇りを持っていただけたらいいのかなっていう感じがちょっとしてます。Thank you, sir. Combining the point with Professor Miyata and Professor Okada, local people are very proud of and they're happy to be that site is nominated to the World Heritage Site List. However, the communication is very important. So,、uh, I'd like to ask the international point of view, Mr. Gamble. In order to inherit and maintain the values of the Sado Island gold mines, I'd like to know the future vision. What kind of overall contributions will be expected to the local people in Sado? Well, first of all, I think this is very timely, 2022, because last year, 2021, UNESCO introduced a revised, updated, What's called the operational guidelines for the implementation of the World Heritage Convention. In this update, there have been some changes, some new introductions. A very important section five of the nomination document, it's about protection and management, used to have a section simply on owners, and that's now updated. To stakeholders, stakeholders, owners, stakeholders, even in some countries, this is applicable, even rights holders. So the host community is receiving increasing attention, rightly so, from UNESCO. Local communities are the guardians of our heritage on the ground. The local residents, they genuinely care for the heritage. And they share it not only for today, but with the future generations. We went through the old agenda, so we would like to move to the question and answer session from the students. For the IUJ students, the university conducted a day trip. To the Sado Island gold mine that happened on last Sunday, so that your memories are very, very fresh. So, that based on the tour and the panel discussions so far, we would like to take a question from the floor. My question is How can we increase the sense of ownership of the gold mine heritage in the minds and the hearts of the Japanese youth? Thank you. これ他の25もある日本の世界遺産も含めてですけれどもやっぱり一番大事なのは若い人たちにそ,のそれを愛してもらえるということがすごく大事だと思いますそのためにはですねやはりもう例えば西三河や鶴志もそうだったんですがもう表面に現れてない時にはですね過去にあるビジュアルいわゆるその絵巻物とかそれから残された道具だとかそういうもので新たにですね、えー同じように楽しんでもらう、体験をしてもらうというふうなこともすごく大切なことではないかなと思います。プロフェッサー・ギャンブルは、このように言っていました。ラディショナルテクノロジーが使われているサドアイランドマイズは、ユニークなアンマーケナイズマイニング、which is an important component also to select サドアイランドマイズ as a World Heritage Site。I would like to ask 
uh, this technique uh, distinguished in a way that it hasn't been seen even in the closer significant mine areas such as Borneo and Sumatra in Indonesia or uh, Benguet and uh, Mindanao in the Philippines, for example. When I spoke about significance, historical significance, and the significance of the surviving remains. If I start with historical significance, uh, Sado Island was of a large scale organized under the Shogunate, had a globally influential uh, level of production, the sheer tonnage of gold that was produced at that time compared to the rest of the world. Um, now, the, the techniques that were used, the traditional techniques, were organized on such a large scale. You don't see that mix of techniques applied on a large scale in a successful manner for that high output of gold anywhere else in the world. That's not to say that you don't see traditional techniques sustained through in other sites. Um, of course, if we talk about alluvial gold, maybe uh, um, in the Philippines or, or um, in the Indonesian archipelago, um, we may see uh, alluvial gold mining in China. Um, these will have traditional techniques um, sustained in time. So the importance for Sado is the combination of attributes and the scale and quality of these features. We will not see that anywhere else. We were able to learn the following three points. Firstly, the Sado Island gold mine is considered as a distinctive mining site and tells the highest level of gold production based on the distinctive mixture of the traditional handcraft pre-modern side and also some modern technology in the Edo period. The second, the distinguished production technologies and the, the production system itself, therefore we can consider to meet the UNESCO's World Heritage Criteria. Although, as Professor Okada mentioned, we need to consider effective method for appealing the values of the site toward the global and the domestic audiences. Lastly, for the successful inscription, inscription of the mines on the World Heritage Site list, it is essential to involve the local communities into the conservation and the promotion of the mines. And as a Professor Miata mentioned, the Sado people are really proud of the site. And how to involve, as Mr. Gamble mentioned, for the future of Sado, how can we involve those people for promoting and preserving a site will be a very, very important part of this procedure. And that's to inscribe the site on the World Heritage Site list. So to close the discussion, we should acknowledge lots of people. Firstly, we would like to thanks to the all students participating to this panel discussion. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, also the, for the people who are watching this event via online platform, we hope this discussion would help you to better understand the OUV out, outstanding universal value of the Sado Island gold mines. And finally, and the most importantly, we would like to send huge thanks to these three panelists participating today. So please give a big round of applause to the panelists. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your contributions. Sado Island gold mines is exceptional cultural heritage which led the world in the volume and quality of its gold production without the use of mechanical mining equipment conclusion of my address, I'd like to appreciate again for participants who traveled here and those online for joining the symposium today. Thank you very much.